How's it going everybody? Welcome into the shop. Uh, my name is Andy Rawls as you probably already know. If you are new to this channel, let me tell you a little bit about it. I have two different style videos. I shoot a video where it's quiet. All it is is the, the sound of the work I'm doing. There's no talking, there's no music. Those are really my more popular videos. I'm usually carving something, uh, doing a shorter project. But I also run a business out of this shop. I have clients who order furniture from me. I've been doing that for six or seven years now on my own as a business. And uh, I was doing that before I started this channel. So I try to vlog and follow that process as well. And today that's what we're doing. Uh, we're working on five Adirondack chairs for a client. Uh, this client has provided me the material and he even provided the design. He found uh, really the full plans for the chair online. Um, and I like the proportions of the design. It looks really cool. I did not like the way the chair was made. So we've made a lot of tweaks and changes. Everything in the provided plans, the chair had just kind of was joints were butted together and screwed together there was no there's no joinery to the chair so eventually it was just going to fall apart so we've added dados and half laps and mortise and tenons and stuff like that to really beefen up this chair make it to where it will be something they can use for a long time i don't like making things that fall apart i like making things that last so the material that he's provided is it's generally just known as cedar but it's people call it juniper uh, mountain cedar it's got a ton of names in texas and i hate it it is nasty stuff I do not like working with it. Um, let's just be honest. Uh, I, it's a miserable tree. I wish that it didn't exist, especially because in January it releases a horrific pollen that I am highly allergic to. Um, so it'll hold up well uh, in the elements, which is good, but we just got to get past the fact that it's just not fun to work with. Okay, so all that aside, let's go ahead and jump in and get started on this project. Okay, so you can see behind me the pile of parts. I think I have everything I need. I'm gonna go back through and recount everything, make sure I have everything um, lined up. And if I see any bad pieces that I didn't discard, I'll go ahead and discard those. I have, still have quite a bit of extra material, um, so if I need more, I can get it. Okay, so I haven't designed the entire chair in SketchUp, and I'm using my X-Carve CNC to cut out all the profiles of the parts. Uh, jigs and even uh, joinery so here you see the side rail of the chair basically what I've got to do is this side rail is too long for my machine so I'm gonna make a jig and I'm breaking this piece into two pieces lengthwise so I'm erasing this one side here we're gonna make that backside jig um, and then I'll make the front side and then join the two together to make the entire jig so what I have to do now is once I have all this figured out I get a top view and then I can export an SVG uh, file using this um, add-on I have in SketchUp and once I export this SVG I take it over to um, I think it's makercam.com and then you can see actually that's the front half of, I was working on so I'm going to delete that off and then we got the back half so now once I open it I just save it again and makercam saves it in a way that easel the program can uh, understand it much better than straight out of uh, SketchUp. So I'll save it out of the makercam.com and then I can import the SVG into Easel, which is the software that runs the X-Carve, uh, and that will, it'll read it perfectly. And I can set up all my cuts and everything 
and, and have it all um, ready to go. Okay, so the, the workflow is to uh, obviously design it in SketchUp, then export the part you want, put it into MakerCam, save it. That file goes into Easel, and then from there you can manipulate how you want to cut it, the depths, and all that stuff. Here's what we got. That is kind of how it's going to lay out right there. I'm going to take this piece of three quarter now and screw it onto the edge, which will essentially make a reference and an attachment point where I can screw to my work piece down here. I'm not too concerned about having holes in the bottom down there because that'll be the bottom of the chair. You really won't see it. Uh, the only other way to attach this would be to screw it right into the face, and then we would have screw holes in the face of our work piece, which I don't really want. So. We'll get this attached and then we can screw it on and it's a matter of taking it to the bandsaw, cutting out right on that profile. Okay, with the profile cut now, I'm going to come back with this big monster pattern bit and it'll that bearing right there will follow the jig we made and make an exact copy onto my workpiece of this shape. Okay, now that I finally have two pieces cut out, these are identical, there's two in here, we've got dados to cut on the front and back. I'm going to lay those out first and then I'm going to set the dado stack on the table saw and we're going to cut those right now. Okay, so I'm cutting all my dados on the side rails on my table saw. Um, this looks a little sketchy, but I've got it clamped really well to the fence, and it's really the only way to do it because I only have one straight edge. I've already cut the profile on the top. And the reason I did that was that I wanted uh, to be able to work around any defects in the material first before I cut dados. So it's just a matter of using a dado blade setting the height and just making multiple passes to clean it out. So these dados will actually become half laps. So the, the mating piece will also have a matching dado that drops into that, which is a very strong joint. All right, so I got an early start this morning. I came in and knocked out the other dado on the other leg. I've got both dados run now. So these will get a matching dado to go into this front section of this leg, just like this. So we need to cut that, and we're going to do that on the X-carve. Let me see if I can shoot this screen. That kind of works. So if I pull over here to my easel, I want to move. This is my curved line on the top, and this is a straight line. This is my workpiece, and this red is showing my toolpath. I want to move this line forward to close this dado, maybe like a 16th or a 32nd. And what that does is it tightens the dado so I know I'm making it too small for the workpiece. If I make it too big, there's no coming back from that. I can't correct that. If I make it too small, I can come back. This is the piece that's, fit, that's fitting into it. I can come back and hand plane this flat surface until it fits.
this. You can see the fit is really, really good. That curved um, shoulder is fitting nicely. Man, it's not getting in focus. There we go. So that curved shoulder is fitting real nice. Fit down here, it looks good. Um, but the problem we got is the distance from here to here is too short. This should be sitting flat on the bench, about like that. And so I looked and checked the software, and when I positioned the cut on the x-axis, I typed in 6 and 23 30 seconds, which is what it needs to be. And instead of figuring that 23 30 seconds is roughly 0.71 something something, I just typed in the fraction, and I don't think Easel recognized that, and it just rounded it down to six inches. So it placed the dado in the wrong spot, which means the workpiece is bad, which means we're going to have to make another one, which means I should have done a test piece. All right, so we got it on round two. It looks really good. That is all proportioned out right. Angles are all good. That's sitting nice and flush. Now we will work on getting the other side done. Okay, so we've got our two frames, side rails, front legs together. So the back leg will sit like this, and then we need to put a three-quarter long uh, by half-inch thick tenon on this. And we're just going to knock that out real quick on the table saw. I'll start by laying out my tenon thickness with my marking gauge. Okay, so there is the tenon. That's pretty simple. Um, it's a little stub tenon that'll just help lock that top rail in place so we don't have any issues with it moving. It's way better than just use, putting two screws into this. Okay, so that back top rail has two mortises in it and I'm using the X-carve to actually cut those mortises. And I was surprised at how well this worked. I mean, it cut super accurate. You can see right there, I ran through my uh, hold down. I've probably run through every single hold down I own. Uh, I've got to learn not to do that. So what I'll have to do is come back and square up the corners and then those mortises are ready to go. Okay, so that is as far as we're gonna take it on this video. We have the everything done here except for the arms. It's the last part of the frame and that's a pretty complicated part. So on the next video, we'll be cutting the arms, putting those on and then assembling all the slats. And then pretty much this, I would call this the prototype, will be finished and then we have four more of these to build. I'm really pumped to have this X-Car uh, CNC. I've had a real struggle figuring out how to use it, but today, in this project is finally kind of a mosquito. Feels like kind of a turning point for me. I finally hit that, kind of beat that learning curve.
it is crazy how how easy it becomes to create a complicated piece like this using uh, SketchUp and the X Carve. All these parts were, I mean, either the jigs or the parts were cut off on that machine, and it all worked without any real problems. The only problems I ran into were problems I created, and those will go away as I do more of this and learn more. So, I think that it is an awesome thing to use technology in the shop and i think it's just as awesome to use traditional tools i think there's a balance i think they both can go i mean we used chisels and hand planes in this uh, to fit these parts together even after they came off the cnc it's an incredibly awesome balance so i'm excited to, to keep exploring that to keep working on that so i'm going to thank you guys always for tuning in you guys are a huge support please comment let me know what you think about the chair about any future projects Remember, you can help support the channel by going over to Bunker Branding, picking up a t-shirt, a hat, I've got stickers, I've got a hoodie. All those things help support me and what I do. Uh, so, always appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.